This is a GCSE question that relates to the new specification for first examination in 2018. Although it's a nice easy question with simple concepts, it's still easy to lose a lot of marks in the way that we structure our answers. As we go through, I'll ask you to stop the video and have a think about what you would have written for your answer. Obviously, it's really easy when somebody tells you the answer, you think, yeah, I would have written that. So the first question starts, figure four shows an animal called a jiboa. Jiboas live in deserts. And there's a photograph of him there. The jiboa has very large back legs for jumping quickly. Suggest how this helps the jiboa survive. Stop the video and formulate an answer. Very simply, we're going to say that his back legs um, help him jump quickly to escape from predators. Now, don't confuse predators and prey. Lots of students got those confused and said to escape from prey. Also, he doesn't jump to avoid the hot sand. That made me chuckle, but apparently that's what a lot of students wrote. The next bit asks, Jiboas are nocturnal, and it tells us what that means. They're active at night. What type of adaptation is this? Draw a ring around the correct answer. So the answer there is behavioural. And that's an adaptation because it's allowed him to occupy a different niche when different predators and prey are available. The next question asks, explain how one adaptation shown in figure four helps the jiboa to live a nocturnal life. So I'm going to paraphrase that. Basically, that question says, name the adaptation and explain it that you can see in the photograph. So if we look at the photograph, we can see he has large eyes, he has long whiskers, and he has large ears. There's no point us writing down other adaptations that we might know the jiboa has, because it's asked us to explain the adaptation from figure four. So we could say he has large eyes to help see in the dark. There's our explanation. Another adaptation, large ears, and the explanation to hear predators. And another adaptation, long whiskers, and the explanation how that helps is to avoid obstacles, very much like a cat does. If they're moving around in the dark, their whiskers give them an extra sense of what's around them. Moving on to the next question, it says, Table 1 shows several ways that water is lost from a jiboa and from a human and we can see straight away there there's a piece of data missing because it's shaded in the question asks what is the percentage water loss by evaporation from the human now if you didn't know how to work out uh, this anyway you could follow the pattern from the result for the jiboa and you could take the 1.46 and realise it was divided by 2 and times by 100 to get 73. And you're just going to repeat that for the water loss from the human. And the answer there is 36%. The next question asks, why was the percentage water loss calculated as well as the volume of water loss in centimetre cubes per day? I would have preferred if this question was just worded, why was the percentage water loss calculated? That's how it's normally phrased in most of these questions, but it's the idea that if we have a percentage water loss, then we're able to make comparisons. Clearly, a jiboa and a human have very different starting masses. So when you're then comparing the water loss, you're not able to do that directly. You need a percentage. <clears throat> the next question says, Figure five shows the percentage water loss for the jiboa. Complete the bar chart in figure five to show the percentage water loss for the human. And there are two marks there. And it's these marks at the side of the page that are as important as the question number because it would be very easy to miss that question and lose those two marks. So you just needed to draw those in and they've been very kind to us because they've given us uh, figures in multiples of two, which means that we always hit the line and we don't have to work out in between the boxes on the graph paper. We are then asked to compare the pattern of water loss for a human and for a jiboa shown in figure five. And this is where it gets interesting. Before we proceed, use the graph and write down what you would have written. 
when I tell you the answer, you'll think, yeah, I would have written that. But then let's look at the alternatives. So the clear answer is to say, for one mark, that the jiboa loses a higher percentage of water by evaporation than the human. Correct. One mark. However, if you had written that the jiboa had lost more water by evaporation than the human, that would be incorrect. And that's because the jiboa only lost 1.46 cubic centimetres, whereas the human lost 900 cubic centimetres. So that can't be true. What a student who wrote this meant to say was that the jiboa lost relatively more water by evaporation than the human. So what if you had written that the jiboa lost 73% and the human lost 36% by evaporation? Well, you still wouldn't get the mark for that because you're not comparing the pattern. You're stating what it is at that particular time. So where are the other marks? Well, we can also say that humans um, lose a higher percentage of water via their urine than the jiboa. And we are actually able to say that water loss via faeces is similar in both because they are actually similar in number. Of course, if you'd refer to the percentage, you would have to say something very different if you were comparing the faeces. So for three marks, that is an excellent example of a really easy question where students can lose a lot of marks, where the wording of your answer is critical to getting the marks. The explicit use of the English language is key to success. Let's read the next question and then we'll pause it and see what you would have written. Jiboas make a small volume of very concentrated urine. Humans also produce concentrated urine when the water level in the blood gets too low. Describe how a named hormone helps the human body produce urine with a higher concentration than normal. Well, let's just make sure we know that we, what we mean by urine with a higher concentration than normal. We mean urine with less water in it. It's also asked us to name a hormone and it's put that in bold, so I reckon that's kind of important. The question's worth four marks, that's mental. So just pause the video and scribble down a quick flowchart of how you would answer this question. Take care in the words that you choose to use. Pause it now. Well, the first thing we're going to say is that the pituitary gland in the brain releases ADH, antidiuretic hormone. And again, because we're in biology and we talk about where things move from and where they move to, we're going to say into the blood. Remember, the pituitary gland is considered to be a master gland. So if you're ever struck, it's the pituitary gland that you're going to guess at. The mark that most students didn't get was this one now, which says that the ADH was transported to the kidney. And at the kidney for the fourth mark, we just needed to say which causes more water to be reabsorbed into the blood. And the use of the word more there is important. As ADH never actually turns off, we just have more of it or less of it. So with less ADH, there would still be being water reabsorbed, but just a lot less. So more ADH means more water. The other thing that's really important is to say that it's reabsorbed. The water is reabsorbed. And that's because that infers that the water actually started off from the blood anyway. And now we're just pulling the water back into the blood in the kidney. An excellent question because it was a nice, easy question. Um, but still lots of potential to lose marks. So I do hope this video has been of use to you. Thanks for watching and please do leave me a comment.